Hello there. We are here at Belgium Veterinary Hospital. I'm Christopher Nolikin. And I'm Lindsay Renzullo, and we have a special episode today in the Bulger Kitchen. One of the Bulger Kitchens. Yeah. We're doing a cooking show for you, which sounds ridiculous, but, um, you know, we get, we get a lot of questions all the time about homemade diets. Yeah. see patients. Oh, yeah. Owners say, I prepare my dog's diet at home, or my, less commonly cats. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and what do you... Feel about those diets. Well, I can understand why people are wanting to maybe cook more diets themselves. There's a lot of stuff in the news about you know pet food recalls, or I feel like now, especially now in in today's day and age, people are much more aware of what they're eating, mm-hmm. um, and they want to make sure that they're eating you know healthy foods, and that they're you're getting ingredients from you know local farms, or they're just much more invested in their own food. So I can understand why people want to do the same for the pets. Because they like yeah, them. and, and I want to make them I, like a couple of clients that their pets legitimately won't eat dry kibble, won't eat the food. Now we could argue yeah. a little bit about how much they tried. That is true. Cause cause I, <laughs> we both have small dogs, and yes. both of our small dogs will put up a big stink if, if you change the diet. And they don't like it. My dog just went on a hunger strike because I changed the flavor of her food, and I, the cold-hearted mommy that I am, said, "You're going to eat it." Or you're not going to eat anything, and so she ate it eventually. It did take a couple of days, but well, that's what, and then I think what ends up happening is Jeff's. And again, I'm Italian. I've got the manja oh, yeah. manja mentality, food is and love. I uh, food is love. Oh, and I just I see my little dogs come up to me, and they they look so cute at the table. So you end up giving them something, and even if you don't give it to them right at the table, you give it to them, you know, in the kitchen or things like that, because they're getting food. And they say that tastes really, really good. I'm gonna now put a hun- up a hunger strike, and I only want to eat that. Right. So we kind of ruin our pets. Right. So, but the big thing is that, generally speaking, I will. I'll probably speak for you in saying we're probably we're not real advocates of home prepared diets. But we want you to. If you're gonna do it, we want you to do it right. And we also want you to um, recognize kind of how hard it is to actually do it right. Yeah, I feel like very few circumstances. You know, I will really. <laughs> be encouraging or pushing a homemade diet for an owner and a pet and it's got to be certain medical reasons why or you know there's got to be some sort of extra benefit because a lot of the foods that are out there in the market are really great foods right. and they're well balanced and, and have veterinarians on staff and so they're really they're really great options out there for them so if they're gonna do homemade diets they've got to go in realizing it's not super simple there are a lot of things that go to it and there's gonna be math lots and lots, lots of math, of math. So where do you where do you get your um, recipes from? Interestingly, where where do you advise people go oh, to? Oh jeez, oh where I for yeah. for pet owners. So you can't go to like some of the pet food sites actually have a couple of like different tips and techniques of how to sort of do homemade recipes. There are a few nutritionists that nutritionalists that are within the country that have recommendations on how to sort of balance a pet's diet. But it's really, really hard because I think a lot of people are more prone to go into conventional websites, which are not always the best or like easy to search websites. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I did a little for this, you know, research here. I did a search, you know, homemade dog food. And I legitimately found thousands of recipes yeah. just put up by any random person. And that's the hardest thing to sort out is who is this random person? We're going to prepare one that we found that I would say, you know, we're going to evaluate it for its nutritional completeness. Um, but you might go onto a well-known human recipe site and say, wow, this recipe looks great. Let me make this. And, feed and it, it may have pet yeah. a long time. And those are not, you know, vetted by any veterinarian. So right. nobody's going through that and sort of, you know, evaluating the, the diet and how if it's balanced or not, you know, if it's appropriate for the dog, you know, based on, on what your dog might need. So, you know, I, I always advise that people, I like it when people ask me, is this okay, what I'm feeding my dog? Uh, I'd rather not that you come in and tell me I prepare his food and I don't want to talk about it. Well, okay. I, I guess if you don't want the information from me, then I, I won't give it to you. But if they come in and they say, this is what I'm doing, tell me if it's complete or not, then we can start working with that. Yeah. Um, I, I love, I mean, I, I don't usually, we don't like to sort of plug one particular place or another, but I do like, there are companies that make uh, a complete balanced, like a powder additive. Yes. And yeah. one is balance it. You know, I like them. Uh, and you can actually go on there and plug in the details of the proteins that you want to use, and they'll give you a recipe. Plus, you have to, you know, get their supplement. But that's kind of, in my opinion, the way to go yeah. for most pets. And I think that a lot of times, you know, that supplement aspect is what's missing in a lot of those diets. Mm-hmm. So, and that's sort of the big thing to be flagged. If you don't sort of see, and we'll go over certain ingredients that you are or could be missing based on just doing these, like, blogging diets that a lot of people put out there on different websites. 
Yeah, so we're gonna, we'll get started making one because it does involve some cooking that I have to stick it in the pressure cooker and we'll keep talking as we as it cooks. But let's start with this one. This is one that I, I've just found online from allrecipes.com. So Which I actually it. love, I love all recipes. I all do. Right? It's very good, I love but, that. You yeah. know, all recipes is still, anybody can post their recipes it's and true. I've made some real lemons from that. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. It is They're not true. always great. This yeah. one though does get four and a half stars. Just so FYI. you would think, as a yes. pet owner, you go on to so all recipes. A good go, website. I'm gonna go and get, get your stuff. Let's, Let's get your stuff. Yeah. All right. So we've got here, Lindsay. Our nice Put some little... gloves on because you're gonna have some raw turkey. All right, here we go. You're not gonna eat the raw turkey. No, I will not. This is pretty exciting. Okay. All right. So the recipe calls for six cups of water. All right. That's Pre-measured for you in the bowl. And the pressure cookers and the other types of cookers, I feel like, are very popular. A lot of people want to do it. We have six cups. I'm only are using, using the Are we water, using the bowl? Water. Oh, but I know, but where are it's we? It's measured. It's right here? But, no, oh, it's already measured. It's already measured that. for you. This is like a real official show. A real legit. Here we go. Six cups of water. We're into it right um, here. We're only making this in the pressure cooker for time purposes. You could do this on the stove top. Um, I'm not actually sure it's going to even come out delicious in the pressure cooker, but... 13 minutes. I might need a little something to function <laughs> that. Yeah, give it. We're gonna use it for the veggies. We're not gonna kill each other. <laughs> Just so you know, we are trained veterinarians, not I'm gonna go wash this. Not cooks, I have to wash that. <laughs> Let's throw this out. All right. Okay, we, we have, have a, a we have whole a pound of ground turkey. Yeah, we did. Whole okay. pound in there. Now two cups of rice. Two cups of rice. Two cups of this rice. Oh, oh, there so we go. So brown rice. All right, we need to. And here's the. We need some scissors. Measuring. We did up. forget some this scissors. This is a half a cup. All right. That's fine. We can do this. Two again. cups. This is how I cook in my own kitchen. I haven't killed myself yet. I think everybody cooks like that in their own kitchen. Let's measure over here though, so we don't mess. We're up. not going to our thing. That's a half a cup. Half a cup. Full cup. One cup. One and a half cups. I think it's fun to cook. A lot of Two people cups. like cooking. I can understand why you want to cook. Do you want to cook best. every day for your I cup? actually don't. I no. I don't enjoy cooking as much as some people do. Though. I do. Okay. Some people enjoy and it. And then we have a half of a package of frozen broccoli, carrots, and cauliflower. Do you want to answer a question? Want to use a question? Oh, sure. Is there a question? Let's answer uh, that. Well, there's a more of a statement. Um, they feel like making your dog's food would be expensive and time consuming. Yeah. So I mean, we're making this. This is only going to make. It depends on the size of your dog. It's gonna make maybe two days worth of food. Uh, the turkey costs about five dollars. The vegetables are, you know, a dollar for a half a package. Um, rice this is not too cheap. expensive, but that's gonna be, let's say, two dollars and fifty cents a day, which is more than dog food. It's yeah. More than right yeah. And then time consuming. Well, this is not gonna take a huge amount of time. You can't just get takeout for your dog. So yeah. you're kind of stuck that once you once you're doing this, you have to you have to do it. You could stick it in the freezer make more um, yeah all right that looks so gross looks <laughs> delicious water and meat let's go stick it in the <laughs> so what do you think about this particular recipe so I mean the recipe itself is actually something that I hear a lot of pet owners do at home right they think fresh vegetables or frozen vegetables with veggies, a nice thing of meat and a carb. They think check, check, check. But in reality, it's really not a balanced meal. Right, right. So I, you know, I went through a checklist that's provided by veterinary nutritionists to figure out is this, is this complete? Um, do we have all the nutrient, all the macronutrients? So when we say not macronutrients, it's carbs, proteins, and fats. So we've got carbs for sure. We have carbs. We have proteins in the turkey. Yep. It's a, they didn't tell you what leanness, I picked 93% because that's the most common. Yep. So there's some fat in there. It's not quite enough, truthfully, and dogs do need fat. So you can't follow human rules, low fat, low sodium, all of that, those right. diets doesn't translate to dogs. Right. So um, what this is lacking is any vitamins. You've got those veggies. Yep. There's not a complete. It's just not enough for a dog. Make sure I set the pressure yep. cooker right. Um, but that's where we sort of go back to those other supplements and those other websites, you know, especially some sort of uh, powder is what it normally comes in, but something else to sort of help supplement all of the rest of the stuff. Because even though it sounds really good, you know, like I said, the meats, veggies, and rice, people think that's great and that's what they feed their dogs, it's really not balanced at the mm -hmm. end of the day. 
Yeah, so, you know, when then we compare it to a recipe from, we're going to make another one from um, Balance It or another nutrition site. I pulled up a couple of very similar ones. So this one is going to be pre-cooked items, which we already cooked here for you. Um, but you've you know, got to generally weigh it. So this is the same. This is meant for about a 35-pound dog or a 1,000-calorie day a day diet. So let's make this one. Okay. Let's see what it has in it. Turn this on. Let's zero it out. Okay, so we're gonna add, that's in ounces, four and one eighth ounce of that meat. Beef, 85% okay. lean. Let's see, four and one eighth ounce. That's one. One ounce. One ounce done. We're at two and a half, 3.8, 4.1. That's fine. That's fine, a little extra. Yeah. A, little, a little bit extra. A little extra. Okay, stay tuned. <laughs> More is better. <laughs> now we're gonna do um, one and seven eighths. We could just round it slightly down the row because I don't have an eighth. Oh, actually, I do have an eighth. Where's my measuring spoon? Yeah. yeah. Okay. One and seven eighths cups of cooked white rice. All right. Well, that's this yucky. All right, you do yeah. that. I made it a little soupy. It's, I think the dogs will love it. It's still. not as yummy as I, I do think the dogs will love it. For my family. We will not be wasting any of this food. We will, in fact, These offer this to our hospitalized patients. No dogs will go hungry in our presence. I won't eat this, though. <laughs> One cup. Ooh. Do you enjoy cooking at home, though, regularly? I do. Yeah. I don't make food so that looks like this, though. Yeah. <laughs> and we should. We should just. <laughs> we should just. <laughs> your, your kids don't like this. I would not eat this rice. Just meat and, and sloppy rice. Sloppy. <laughs> and we should also just, as a, I don't know if we we're going to get to this later on in the segments, but I just want to clarify, though, that this these types of diets that we're sort of talking about and discussing today with the appropriate supplementations and stuff like that, those are really for long-term diets for your dog. So these are for diets that you're going to be feeding your dog as the sole source of nutrition for your animal. We very often will have cases of gastroenteritis or other reasons why dogs maybe need a more a blandish type of diet. And those diets aren't always nutritionally balanced, but just something that we can kind of feed our patients for a short course of period of time or for a short course of time, just to make sure that we can kind of get them over our hurdle before they can go back into their normal food. Right. So yeah, so that diet that we just put in the pressure cooker actually would probably be perfectly fine for a dog that has a little GI distress. Although it's got brown rice, which is a little yeah. harder to digest. Yeah. You know that kind of a diet would be fine. Yep. Um, all right, so we've got our rice and our beef, and now the critical, a critical ingredient that wasn't added to the other diet is oil. So we've got soybean. This one happens to be soybean oil. Um, our recipe calls for soybean soybean oil, but you could do other types of oils. You just would want to not substitute without checking with someone because substitutions matter. Yeah. So five teaspoons. And the teaspoons are tablespoons. That's a tablespoon. Oh, really? oh, I thought it's a tablespoon. tablespoon. I'm sorry, I misread. I misread. Yeah, we could, we could oh, we could use that. I actually don't know how many teaspoons in a tablespoon. Three. Three. All right, really? well, there we go. You don't know that? No. Oh, I don't like to cook too much, remember? Oh, right. I like the dessert. That's, yeah. um, now we'll go and switch. To okay. Three teaspoons. I'll put that in. Try to keep it as yes. clean as we can. This is a faux kitchen. Faux kitchen. Right oh, here. I just added a little extra. That's there you go. It's okay, Italian. A little extra oil. All right. So now we've got our oil. Now we're gonna add, do you wanna cut these up? Or you yeah, I sure do. Up? We didn't bring a cutting board, so we're just gonna try very carefully not to, we're we're gonna to chop these the up. Now you can put them in the blender. You could actually put the whole thing in the blender. Some recipes, in fact, this one suggests putting it in the blender so your animal can't just like pick out the things that they like and kind of skip the carrots, for example. Which happens. I do think that I'm often surprised at how many dogs will actually eat veggies. Uh, my dogs never like veggies. I feel like the veggies are really good. The carrots and stuff, they're sweet, yeah. they're crunchy. Dogs tend to like them. Yeah. Um, broccoli, I feel like, can be a harder That's sell a sometimes. Yeah. Um, it has more of, a, of an acquired taste. Cruciferous vegetable. Mm. Mm. That's a good word, yeah. My kids <laughs> love broccoli, though. Yeah, my kids do, too. Love broccoli. How, mm. how chopped do you want it? Finally chopped? That's probably fine. All right. For our purposes. There we go. We should have brought the dogs in from last week and done a taste test. Oh my goodness. All the genetic testing dogs we should have done. Eat it all up. Okay, so now we've got our stuff mixed in. And now to make this complete, you need you need your minerals. So you need vitamins and minerals. Um, this of course is from the balance it site, so they're suggesting their own supplement and you just add what they suggest, which is 
you know, two, uh, three and three quarter teaspoons of balance it. <clears throat> Nutrition, nutritionists will also say, well, vitamins are okay. So a daily multivitamin daily per dog, one, and then calcium. So this, we would need to add a little bit of calcium because the daily multivitamins don't contain a full regimen. So one multivitamin, one calcium, and we got to grind that up. There we go. Oh, oh you're going to make oh, me do it? make you do it. Oh, dear. There I you hate go. the mortar and pestle. Oh, it's a hard one. Oh, no, it wasn't that bad. All right. So but you do have to be up. careful, too, because, I mean, if your dogs end up loving this stuff, if they do eat a whole bottle oh, of calcium, boy. that's a big problem. Or even if they, even if you supplement it inappropriately, if you thought that maybe they really needed it, um, a lot of times people, when they have uh, pregnant um, or nursing dogs, they might think that they need to get more extra supplements. They're kind of over supplementing these dogs. Um, and it can be a big problem. And almost all of these calcium supplements have a lot of vitamin D in them, and that yeah. can be toxic too. This is lower, so this one will be okay, but um, vitamin D is toxic to dogs in large quantities too. Yep. So now we made up this. I can't get the beef mixed in. It's fine. That looks really good. That looks. Really... If I was a border terrier, I would definitely di just dive right in. Okay, so let's, you know, we'll show it a little bit. Oh, here. yeah. So we can see. So this is the daily amount. This amount is what a 35 pound dog would eat for a day. Like yeah. that seems, I think that's more than most people would have guessed. Yeah, And I agree. Like what is, you know, cost wise, that's gonna be fairly expensive. Yeah. This is more than they were suggesting on the other ration yeah. that we were saying. Um, but that's, that's a thousand calories and that's what a, about a 35 to a 50 pound dog eats depending upon its, its uh, activity level. Yeah. And I do think it's pretty palatable. I think that's uh, one thing that people yeah, really want is that, you know, they, they think that maybe their dogs are going to get bored with the type of food that they're on or that they want to kind of give them something fresh and stuff. And it's not wrong ever to give, like, fresh veggies and things like that. But, you know, as far as making sure that, that whatever you're making at home, you're feeding as a balanced diet, you do have to be really, you know, cautious about, you know, how you're supplementing them. And that's what's so easy and great about the prepared dog foods right. is that they're all done for you. Right. And that's, you know, I don't even necessarily advise people just go off the shelf and buy any old vitamin supplement. Like I sat there for about an, you know, half an hour staring at these and making sure that they were not containing anything that would be toxic to a dog because there's a lot of things that our recommended daily allowance is different from what a dog would be. Right, <clears throat> right. So um, I think that our pressure cooker is going to take way longer than this podcast is. <laughs> so I think what I would just say with regard to that is that amount that we made in there came out to about um, 2,000, it's 2,000 calories yep. worth of food. So about half of that would be the same calorie content as this. Yep. Um, but, you know, again, you're reading this this recipe and it says, I'm just, <laughs> I've made dog food ever since my dogs were puppies, four years now. So how do you feel about that? Well, you know, I mean, if you've been feeding your dog a, non-balanced diet for four years it's not the best thing i mean of course we can get dogs obviously to live that long on this diet and four it's years for her it, right but it's, it's not that long it's and a third of the pet's life and you know there could be some health problems that can occur as time goes on if you're continue to do that yeah so like chronic calcium deficiency can cause um, these severe bone issues where the dogs actually absorb their own bones to make up additional calcium in their body so yeah. that's, that's something that happens over time um, they're very healthy and have never had any problems. You know how I feel about the statement. They have right. never, I've never had a problem with that. Right. You could drive for 20 years with no seatbelt on, but right. it only takes one, you know, fatal accident. Um, so not ever having had a problem doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's okay. It just means you, you may have been lucky. Um, and then, you know, my dogs are large breeds so they get two cups in the morning and PM. So four cups a day. So that might, might. I, we could measure this. This is probably, you think that's six cups? No, not even, I don't think. You don't think? No. So four cups. Yeah. Um, so that's not enough for large breed. No. So they may be fine. Maybe she's supplementing in other ways. I don't know. Or and she I, or he, I don't actually know. Oh, know, it was a girl. girl. It right was girl. a girl, yeah. Cause it, yeah, right. Um, but I do, you know, and it's also a good point about, you know, how much she's feeding and saying, this is this is the amount of cups of dog food I give my whatever pound dog. You know, a lot of dogs, um, you know, we have certain what we call like an RER or a resting energy requirement. And it sort of is the amount of energy they need in kilocalories um, to function. But that being said, you do have, 
variations with that based on if your dog is a dog that's outside playing a bunch and running around and very active versus not. And so you can't just say my, you know, lab who's 60 pounds, all labs that are 60 pounds need to eat, you know, two cups a day. You do need to vary, you do need to sort of look at that and make a variation based on your dog's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So that's not a standard, you know, you know, hard line. Right. So I guess take homes for people. Take homes. Would, yeah, let's let's okay. make some take homes. Let's so, do take like takeaways. Take like away. here's your doggy bag of information right. that we would. So for short term use, mm -hmm. we often advise a protein source and a carb source. We're saying short term for like less than a week usually. Yeah. Maybe sometimes mixed in with other things up to like a month. We'll do yeah. that kind of a diet um, without any added minerals or anything like that. Yeah. Um, if you are right now normally feeding your pet a dry kibble plus or minus and wet and they like it, <laughs> let's stick with that because it is more expensive to do this. Yes. Oh, definitely. And, and time consuming. And time consuming. I mean, yes. Yep. And you again, you can't just get takeout one day because you couldn't cook for your pet. And if you really, really want to cook for your pets, if there's a, a strong desire that you have that you want to cook for your pets, speak to your veterinarian about it. I mean, you know, we do have a lot of resources that we can give you to make sure that your pet is going to be getting a balanced diet. And you just you, you need to take a little bit more um, ownership in how you're sort of preparing those meals and making sure it's, it's appropriate. And if you're already feeding your pet a home prepared diet, We'd advise you to ask the questions of the diet that we just asked. Is it nutritionally complete? Does it have all the major macronutrients? Does it have some vitamin source and some minerals? And if it doesn't, get some help from your vet. Um, really, I feel like if you're going to feed your pet home prepared food, you should have a few things in your mind. You should know what, how many calories does my dog eat a day? How many um, grams of protein should I be feeding it? You should have some of those things in your mind. If you don't know the answer to that, you know, we can get you answers to that. Vets can, can help you with it. Yeah. So Definitely. that's all we're, we're doing. Enjoyed our cooking nope. show. Do we have any other questions we coming any, in online? No other questions, but we can share the pictures of the finished stuff when we're done. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. So oh. we'll share pictures of the finished uh, foods, delicious as they are, on our uh, what, Facebook, Facebook site. Yep. And um, don't forget to like us or subscribe to us on all the common podcast things the itunes and google play mm -hmm. and thank you to our sponsors ethos veterinary ethos health veterinary health and goodbye thanks so much yeah